All right, so let's talk about this. Come on in where the camera can see you a little bit. All right, so we spent about 20, 25 minutes just working on our structured uh, ground strokes. First time we've done structured ground strokes in what, six weeks or something? Um, so what were your experiences? It's, yeah, it's difficult, yeah. What, what, what was that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys think you're bad left hand, left hand? You should see us left hand to left hand. Um, okay, so what, what can we do to make it easier? What makes this drill or this, uh, all of these drills easier when we're learning repetition? Yeah, repetition will make it easier for sure. What about speed? Huh? Yeah, softer, slower. Slow it down, right? So some, some, some pairs might take a little longer to get to 10. We don't have to get to 10 every time. Some, uh, some groups might do 15 in the same span it takes the other group to do 8. Whatever, that's fine, right? The important thing is we switch at the same time. There's no pressure on people. We just keep it going nice and easy. So the pace, depth is important. I would rather you hit a shot that, uh, that requires your partner to step forward and hit it than to back up and hit it. Because if you're going to maintain control, shorter balls are better than longer balls. Not that we don't do long ball drills. We do. We just don't do them at this level yet. So it can bounce twice. That's another way to make it a little easier if the ball's not quite getting to you. Okay? Um, turning sideways is helpful. Right? You're going to spray less if if you're hitting everything open, you're going to spray a lot more than if you manage to get a little bit closed off or neutral on some shots. Okay? Big backswing or short backswing? Yeah. So the key is, if I'm hitting the ball a long distance, so if I'm back here at the baseline, I'm hitting the ball to the other baseline, I'm going to have a full backswing. As I move into the court, my backswing gets shorter. Right around here, there is no backswing. And once I get to the kitchen, the racket actually starts in front of me, doesn't it? Okay. The one exception is the drop shot from the backcourt. The drop shot, the racket's going to stay in front of you regardless. Okay. But that's because I'm hitting from the baseline, not to the other baseline. I'm only hitting to the net. So I don't need the long backswing. Make sense? Okay. Literally, as you get further into this court, the less backswing you have. So if, you're, if we're at half court and you're bringing the racket back here to start, you're going to have trouble, right? So from here, you shouldn't need to bring the racket back any more than about here. Notice that my elbow is still touching my side. If I open up a gap here, I'm going to start hitting it too hard. <clears throat> because if I'm going to take this big, long swing at a ball, I'm going to have to decelerate and then I lose control. So you're better off to take a shorter backswing and give you a chance to accelerate a little bit. Make sense? Okay. Those are all things that help make it a little bit easier. Um, you don't have to figure it all out on the first day, first lesson, right? Learning is a process. We're going to get a little bit better every week. Any questions about? Yeah. I found with our course, it's way easier if we all move together. So we do one thing. Oh, yeah. Then we say, are you guys ready? And then we do the next thing. Yeah. Otherwise, we're banging heads. Yeah. We don't want to be doing that. Tim is worth hitting, though. <laughs> we'll just use the ball. We'll use Tim instead of the ball. That way, everybody gets to hit Tim. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do now is, so we've done. We, we're not learning any new strokes today. We're just working on controlling the strokes that we already know. Okay. So we were doing our diagonals. We're going to go back to hitting our diagonals. We're going to be we're going to start trying to hit forehand to forehand in a controlled way. We're going to go for about five minutes, and then I'm going to call rotation. Then we're going to rotate around our anchors. So we'll go back to the same courts that we had. We're just learning to go half court to half court, uh, forehand to forehand. Well, it depends on who your partner is, but diagonally one way, and then diagonally the other way. We're going to try and get some forehands in, some backhands in. I want you to learn to turn sideways for your forehand strokes, to turn backwards for your, or to turn, yeah, to turn side, the other side for your backhand strokes, okay? Now, a ball that's out front of you, you may 
turn sideways to receive it and then realize, oh, it's going to be up there. The, the instinct is going to be for you to take a step forward and swing at the same time. What I would rather see you do is do a little step, shuffle step, karaoke step. I'd like, rather see you move a little bit sideways towards the ball to hit it than to step forward and hit it from an open stance. Right? There are times to do both. Right? There are going to be lots of times when you're going to you're going to be lined up to hit it here and realize, oh, it's going to be better for me to step forward and take it in an open stance than it is for me to side shuffle or, or karaoke step to get to the ball. So you need to be able to do both. But today we're working on trying our, to do our sideways movement to get to the ball. So that's what I'd like to be your default attempt today. Yes? If two objectives, that objective one is placement. Yeah, control. Yeah. Uh, yes, and that's why I'm talking about turning sideways, right? We're, we're working on placement. That's our primary objective is placement, okay? To get to the ball, though, because everybody in this group is a little bit inconsistent, you're going to get some inconsistent balls. So you're going to have to move to get a ball. Now, the plant is an important concept. Does everybody know what a plant is? Okay, planting is, yeah. So you don't want to be moving and hitting the ball, right? You don't want to be moving with your foot coming forward at the same time or this, right? We want to get in our position, hit our shot, and then move our foot, right? Sometimes, especially if you're leaning, you might end up dragging this black back foot a little bit, but this foot is planted, right? So the, 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 the foot underneath your racket, whichever direction you're hitting, the forward foot should be planted. All right, so if I'm hitting a backhand, this is my forward foot. It should be planted while I'm hitting my shot. I don't want to be hitting and moving at the same time. I want to hit, and then I want to move. Make sense? Okay. So that's what we're working on. So we're working on the plant. Like when we're using it in terms of volume, we were saying plant and then hitting. Yeah. Like when we were volleying, we wanted to do that. When we were volleying, we were using a ball machine. Which was coming to a very predictable into a predictable zone. In this situation, it's not going to be as predictable because this is live action feeding with partners that are not pro level feeders, right? So we're working on our consistency. That's our primary goal. In order to achieve consistency, we want sideways movement. We want to plant and hit. Okay? You can work more specifically on your plant. You can work more specifically on your plant. Yeah, well, everybody will, but I want you to focus on that because you've got the rest of this, right? Me, ball machine or no ball machine, mm -hmm. we're still, why wouldn't the, the, the huge plant work? Because we weren't moving with the ball, the volleys. We were standing still. Are you talking about the volleys or the ground strokes with the ball machine? I'm talking about the concept of planting, whether it's a volley or a ground stroke or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. We're still planting mm -hmm. and then hitting. Right? Yeah. This group, I'm trying to get them to turn sideways. That's their primary focus. Your primary focus, since you already know how to turn sideways, is the plant. Okay. Do you want these two people to also say plant? No, they don't need to say plant. I just give, they can work on what I told them to work on. You're, you're, you've, got an ex, you've got one extra layer. All right, do we have balls? Who needs balls? That takes some extra ones if you got pockets. Okay, who did I last work with? Margaret? I'll start with Margaret. So Margaret, you're going to be over there. Yeah, Anne's going to be there. Belinda's going to be here. From about half court to half court. You want to be in the center of your box, Margaret. I'm going to try to go to that side. And you're going to try and hit it back to me. That's right. Didn't quite make it. Yeah, we're going diagonally. Yeah. Diagonally. Nice and easy. Of course. Oh.
Stay relaxed. You're fine. Just nice and easy. Oops. Good job, Margaret. Okay. Okay, everybody come on in for a second. Because I'm dealing with a concussion, I don't want to be shouting too much because it just makes my headache. Is that? Yeah, no, you can't hear me anyways. It's tough uh, to hear in this room because it's so echoey. Okay, so we're making progress. It's going... I still control. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're working on developing control. There's not going to be any kind of magic elixir that I can give you that will go give control. I like to tell my students that we can put like a, a spray on your racket to give you control, but it's only activated by practice, right? So yeah. practice is... Practice is the, is the magic elixir, yes. right? Okay? All right. So we're going to rotate uh, one around me. You had a question? Yeah. Trying to plant with the same foot. Yeah. So. On your backhand, remember you're going to plant with your forward foot. On your forehand, you're going to plant with your forward foot. Mm -hmm. Ball's going very slow. Okay, so one of the ways you can work on this, this is, this is good. One of the ways you can work on this is at home in front of your mirror, your full-length mirror. At home in front of your full-length mirror, right? Hit a stroke, go back to neutral and then hit a stroke because you don't have to go you don't have to hit a stroke and take a step forward you can hit a stroke back to neutral and then step back with this foot back to neutral step back with this foot back to neutral yep yeah so as soon as you hit your shot you're going to go back to neutral next shot back to neutral next shot back to neutral It depends on where the ball is, right? If the ball's short, you're going to step forward and turn sideways. If the ball's deep, you're going to step back and turn sideways. So a lot of this is just, a lot of this is time and experience, right? Some of it is practice. If you want to get better faster, you can add visualization to what you're doing. Okay. All right? Be patient with yourself. Don't, don't feel pressured. That's Okay, Margaret, what she's saying, what, what I don't think everybody's communicating is if the ball is short, if I have to go get a ball up here, I'm going to turn sideways and step forward, right? But if the ball's back here, I'm going to turn sideways and step backwards, right? So I need to get sideways and then take the step. Oh, yeah. Hit the ball, back to neutral. Hit the ball, back to neutral. Hit the ball, back to neutral. Yeah. All right. So, if the ball is going to go deep, I need to turn sideways and step back. All right? If the ball is going short, I need to turn sideways and go forward. So, sideways first, then you make your steps. Got that? Alright. Don't feel that you have to have it 100% today. We're going to work on it. We're going to make progress on it. You don't have to have it 100% today. Okay? Alright, let's rotate one position. I'll work with Belinda, and you can work with uh, 
uh, Margaret? You're, you're going to be diagonally with Margaret? Yeah? Is that, where were you? I was with you. You were here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, then this is the right place. Yeah, so you're with Margaret now. Yeah, okay. So we're going to go. So you want to be in the center in the middle of your box, about halfway back. A little, little further back. Center and about halfway. It's hard to hear in here, isn't it? Oh. Okay. All right. That was a good one, Margaret. Okay, let's rotate one position. So you're going to be over here now. Belinda's going to be over here. Or Margaret's going to be over here. Okay. You want me to give you forehands or backhands? Forehands or backhands? You want backhands? Okay. Oops, sorry, that's a forehand. Try to give you family feeds. Oh, sorry. That was a bad one. All right, let's rotate one position. So Margaret's going to be over here. Melinda's going to be over here. All right. Very nice, Margaret. Okay. Okay.
Well done, Margaret. Ah, that one I should have just caught. Okay, Belinda and Anne, let's see, you and I switch sides. Uh, sorry, you two switch sides and us two will switch sides. All right, here we go, Margaret. So I'm going to try and give you mostly forehands, okay? I want you to take most of these on your forehand, okay? Good. Good job, Margaret. Good. Oh, great. So you're getting more and more control every minute. That's awesome. Okay. Okay, let's rotate one position. Center. Middle. There we go. Sorry, Ann. Is it really five to ten? We're out of time. Let's do a pickup. You guys did great. That was awesome. Okay, guys, grab your balls and come on over here, please. We're going to have a little meeting. We'll do a quick pickup, have a quick little wrap up conversation. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to clean up in a minute. Let's have a little conversation first. Okay. How many people, when you come out to the courts to play, stand in the net and start a dinking warm up? Everybody does that, right? Yeah. Okay. How many people do a volley warm-up regularly? You? Anybody else? How many people do a ground strokes warm-up? Ground strokes almost never get done as part of your warm-up, right? So that's why you struggle today, right? You're better dinkers than you are ground strokers, right? Because you practice your dinking a hell of a lot more than you do your ground stroking, right? So if you have a regular training partner, add some ground strokes into your warm-up. Like we always do a thinking warm-up, because I take it for granted that we know how to do, do ground strokes. And then we go to do ground strokes, and it's like, oh, yeah, we haven't done ground strokes now in six weeks. I mean, we, we do them while we're playing, while we're practicing, but we don't actually 
practice them as a control drill, right? So you now, I mean, you all have the structured ground stroke drill. You have a structured volley drill. You have a structured uh, dinking drill. Just a matter of working it in and reminding your partner that they have you have to do it every once in a while. Um, did you feel the control come from the beginning of the lesson to the end of the lesson? Yeah. So it took you half an hour to kind of get warmed up and get back, and then your body starts, your brain starts to rediscover what it is that you don't often do, right? And then the control comes in. But it's it's it, it's a confidence builder to feel that control come, isn't it? Yeah. Any questions about what we did today? Good. Okay. Let's uh, pack everything up, get out of here. We have to be out of here in three minutes. So I think we can do it. Oh, we leave the nets up. Yeah, uh, but we have to put the balls away and the curtain back and and then, yep. Here you go, Miguel. You got.